Ah, the lowly pea, who has risen above the ranks of all other vegetation because of this man, Gregor Mendel. Hi everyone, it's Dr. LeBlanc with Unit 10B, Mendelian Genetics. Our learning goals are to understand how Mendel discovered the laws of inheritance, to understand Mendel's experimental system of peas, including self-crossing, cross-fertilization, and parental and filial generations, to understand the particulate theory of inheritance of diploid organisms, and what it means to be heterozygous and homozygous, to understand what dominant and recessive traits mean, to understand Mendel's laws of segregation of alleles and independent assortment as well as linkage, to understand how to predict the outcome of crosses using Punnett squares, and to understand monohybrid, dihybrid, and test crosses. This is a very idyllic setting. This is where Mendel lived in the 1800s in Vienna, Austria, and uh, the caretakers have planted a garden in his memory. If you take a close look at it, the pattern of the patches of pea plants uh, correspond to a Punnett square, where we have dominant, two dominant alleles producing the dominant phenotype, as well as heterozygote genotypes producing the dominant phenotype, and one patch that represents the recessive trait. Mendel's two types of crosses were self-fertilization and cross-fertilization. Self-fertilization occurs when the pollen and the egg are derived from the same plant, but cross-fertilization uses pollens and eggs from different plants. He used both of these in strategically to uh, come up with his laws of inheritance. So a flower has um, a stigma, which uh, produces a, a seed at the bottom here, eventually, and it has anthers that produce pollen that land on the stigma and travel down, creating a pollen tube and then fertilize the ovule in the flower, and that end, ends up producing a seed. Now you can either have self-fertilization where the pollen from the same flower fertilizes the, uh, its own eggs, or you can cross-fertilize. And then if you're going to do that, you have to remove the anthers and get some pollen from a different plant. Um, in either case, you'll produce seeds, which if you plant them, will grow into pea plants. Uh, Mendel used several true breeding cell uh, plant cell lines. He realized that if he was going to set up crosses, he had to have lines of plants uh, that produce the same phenotype, the same characteristics, generation after generation after generation. And so he um, focused on a few different characteristics, height, flower color, seed color, seed shape, um, and used those true breeding lines of plants to set up crosses. So his first experiment was to take tall plants and cross them with short plants. And when he did that, he used his cross-fertilization method. They produced seeds called the filial 1 generation, or F1 generation. And when he planted those seeds, he found that all of the plants that grew from those seeds all had the phenotype of tall, the tall parent. He could not find any short plants in that first generation. So right away, he discerned that the tall trait was dominant over the short trait. But Mendel was smart. He realized that that uh, short trait just didn't go away. It was masked somehow. It was recessive, but still the information for that trait was still present in that F1 generation. And so he self fertilized the F1 generation to produce some seeds. And when he planted those seeds, he ended up with tall plants, tall plants, some dwarf plants, and more tall plants. And so he was able to determine that, that the gene for, or the genetic information for that dwarf plant was still present in those F1 plants. 
this is what we know about now uh, how to designate the genotypes for these different uh, plants. So our true breeding tall plants are going to have two dominant alleles and our true breeding short plants are going to have two recessive alleles and when we cross fertilize these together you end up with an F1 generation that has the genotype of a dominant allele plus a recessive allele but it's exhibiting the dominant phenotype and when you cross fertilize and self fertilize these you can end up with various combination two large alleles um, a large allele and a small allele a dominant and recessive or two um, recessive alleles so this is the data that he got when he did many different crosses um, the P cross, the parental crosses, were true breeding, tall and, and uh, dwarf, round and wrinkled, yellow and green. And in every single case in the F1 generation, all of these crosses exhibited a single dominant genotype, which means that the other uh, phenotype was recessive to this one. Um, when he counted the F2 generation, he found that that the ratio of dominant to recessive phenotypes was always three to one. So Mendel's data suggested many things and he was smart enough to figure it out. First of all, it suggested that there was a particulate theory of inheritance. In other words, there were, each trait was uh, dictated by some type of information package. Uh, for a given character, a pea plant contains two discrete hereditary factors, one from each parent. In other words, Mendel figured out that individuals were diploid. The two factors can be identical or different. They can be either homozygous or heterozygous. When the two factors of a single character are different, one is dominant and its effect can be seen, and the other is recessive and it is not expressed. During gamete formation, the production of sperm and eggs, the paired factors segregate from each other so that half of the gametes receive one factor and half of the gametes receive the other. This is Mendel's law of segregation of alleles. And this is what it looks like if we look at the plant. So a tall plant, true breeding, will have two large T alleles mated with a dwarf plant that has two recessive alleles. <clears throat> the gametes that can produce from the tall plant are only uh, big T, and the gametes that can be produced from the dwarf plant are only little T. And so the F1 generation is a combination of those two different alleles, uh, dominant and recessive. Um, the important part becomes when you self-fertilize these. These two alleles separate from each other into the gametes. They don't go together, they separate from each other, uh, producing gametes that ha have either a big T or a little t allele in them. And when you self-fertilize, you can mix a big T with another big T or a big T with a little t. And that's the um, only combinations you can get. Big T, two big T's, a big T and a little T, or a little T. And the ratio comes out to be a one to two to one for the genotype, but a three to one ratio for the phenotype. And that's exactly what Mendel observed. Um, along came Reginald Punnett um, several years later and said, gee, wouldn't this be much easier to envision with a chart perhaps like this? And this was born the Punnett squares. Punnett squares um, of a cross between two heterozygotes for one character, tallness looks something like this. Um, convention has it that we put the male gametes on the top, across the top of our grid. And remember that gametes are haploid, so they're only going to have one copy of that uh, allele for each of the, for the genes. So um, for our heterozygous here, individual, we can have either a big T or a little t allele. 
And the same is true for the female gametes. They're either a dominant or recessive allele. And then in our boxes here, where we add the uh, genotypes of the individuals that are produced from these crosses, uh, big T, big T, big T, little T, big T, little T, or two little T's. So our genotypes are one to two to one, but our phenotype, because of the dominance of the tallness gene allele, is three to one. Mendel also looked at two different characteristics at the same time. And this led him to another uh, important discovery. These are called dihybrid crosses using two different characters or genes, each with two alleles. So one of the characteristics that Mendel used was seed texture, round versus wrinkle, two different alleles for seed texture, or seed color, yellow versus green. So he asked what kind of gametes are produced in the F1 dihybrid cross? Are the genes linked or are they, uh, do they assort independently? Do they separate and segregate from each other? So if we start out with our parental generation with the same peas here uh, for each hypothesis, we have uh, round yellow peas, the two dominant alleles, true breeding, so they are homozygous, and uh, true breeding wrinkled green peas, which are the recessive alleles, are also homozygous, same for this um, hypothesis. Um, they produce uh, only two kinds of gametes. These can produce only um, gametes that have the uh, round allele and the yellow allele, the dominant alleles, and these can only produce uh, eggs or sperm with the two recessive alleles. Those are the only kinds of gametes that these individuals can produce. And the F1 generation ends up uh, with um, round and yellow peas, um, but what kind of gametes can they produce? If the genes are linked together, that means that the alleles for uh, the two dominant alleles are going to be linked together. That means that they will only produce gametes that are either round and yellow or wrinkled and green. The same types of gametes produced by their parents because the genes are physically linked somehow together. Okay. If, however, they segregate from each other, they separate and um, the round allele is not linked to the yellow allele, even though they came as a package from the parents, if they are separated from each other, if they segregate or separate from each other in the production of eggs and sperm, then you will end up with four different combinations of, of gametes. Your round allele could pair with a yellow allele, or it could pair with a green allele. And similarly, the wrinkled allele could pair with a yellow allele or it could pair with a green allele. So a dihybrid cross was set up um, in the P1 generation. We have round versus and wrinkle um, made it together. The F1 generation produced peas that are all round and yellow. And the F1 cross between these two, uh, this type of P, self-crossing, produces gametes that are present in the F2 generation, or the F2 generation produces these particular types of uh, phenotypes. So if we look, take a bigger look here, um, this is our F1 generation, and these are our F2 generation Ps down below. So if this P plant can produce all four of these types of uh, gametes, and this pea plant can produce all four of these types of gametes, you end up with a whole bunch of different possible combinations. The data from his dihybrid cross was he found that there were 315 round yellow seeds, those are the uh, two dominant phenotypes, 101 wrinkled 
yellow seeds. This is a recessive phenotype and this is a dominant phenotype. 108 round and green seeds, dominant recessive. And 32 green wrinkled, these are the both recessive phenotypes. So if you transform um, that into a ratio, you would end up with your predicted 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. That's if the genes act independently of each other, and that is exactly what Mendel saw. So he came up with the second very important law, the law of independent assortment, which means that during gamete formation, the segregation of alleles of one gene is independent of the segregation of the alleles from another gene. In other words, you just end up with a um, randomization of the uh, different alleles in each a gamete that's formed. In other words, the genes are not linked. Now, it's a very curious thing that Mendel uh, happened to choose all of those traits that were not linked together. If he did choose genes that were linked together, he probably would have had a much more difficult time figuring out uh, all of his laws. So here's another dihybrid cross. This time we're crossing um, tall and yellow peas. This would be um, a heterozygote um, a cross with another heterozygote, um, kind of like a F1 self-crossing um, uh, portion of uh, Mendel's experiments. And we come up with these different uh, genotypes and phenotypes. So um, if we use the Punnett square, we can come up with our prediction that we would get nine tall plants and three uh, with yellow seeds, three tall plants with green, and three dwarf with yellow, and to a ratio of only one dwarf plants with green seeds. Now, what if you were in the field and you picked up a tall yellow plant or even a tall green plant? How could you figure out what the genotype was of that plant? Plant. Well, besides sequencing the DNA, you could do something called a test cross. If you mate um, a female plant that is tall and yellow and heterozygous for both um, genes to a male that is homozygous recessive for both traits, you will come up with a very distinct ratio. Okay, here's our modified Punnett square. This time we put the uh, female gametes at the top here, a um, big T and a big Y and a big T and a little Y, um, a little T and little Y and uh, two lowercase alleles, to uh, little T, little Y. Okay, those are the four different types of gametes that are produced by the female parent in this cross. But the male parent can only produce one type of sperm, and that is one with a recessive gene for tallness and a recessive gene for seed color, little t, y. So when you fill this out, you will get tall yellow, tall green, dwarf yellow, and dwarf green in a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. And it will always happen this way. If the female parent is heterozygous, for both of the genes. If the genes are sorted independently, um, the expected phenotypic ratio among the offspring is one to one to one to one. <clears throat> if the genes are linked, or if this, uh, this is an unknown phenotype, then you will get a different ratio. You can go ahead and try different female genotypes to determine what the ratio of phenotypes that result from the test cross might be. Mendel discovered the laws of inheritance by self-fertilizing and cross-fertilizing pea plants. He discovered that organisms were diploid and that there were alleles uh, could be one and that there were alleles that could be dominant over recessive traits. Punnett squares helped in predicting the outcomes of genetic crosses. True breeding dominant and recessive parental strains when crossed produce an F1 generation that exhibits the dominant phenotype. When F1 generations are self-crossed, the phenotypic ratio of dominant to recessive phenotype is 3 to 1. Crosses involving 
one and two genetic traits are called monohybrid and dihybrid crosses respectively. Dihybrid crosses follow two traits at the same time that demonstrate simple dominance. They have phenotypic ratios of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. Test crosses reveal the genotypes of an unknown organism exhibiting the dominant phenotype by crossing it to a male that is homozygous recessive.